Robert Scale. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. He ain't asking you to leave this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how. If you're going to walk in what I teach, you have got to make it your foundation how Jesus loved on the cross. That is your life. These are some of the most astounding words. Watch it. As he is, so are we. Welcome again to Jesus. This action is broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales. I tell you, it's been a Holy Ghost week. It's been a Holy Ghost week. Looking unto Jesus. I've been teaching on what, what do you live by? I, I, and the Lord told me to teach this series to wake people up. Uh, because you can have errors that, that you that you live by, and then the other errors, it's not the Lord. And what people will do sometimes, they, the devil will come and tell you to focus on the errors that you live right in, and just kind of leave the other ones alone. But that, no, we, the just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That means the life of a Christian that live in righteousness, it must start with faith, and faith is Jesus, and Jesus is faith. So when you when you live the righteousness of God, it has to begin with Jesus, begin with faith, and has to end with faith. It has to end with Jesus. It has to get Jesus to start it and finish it. Amen. And, and that's how David... <laughs> one uh, against Goliath. He started with God delivering him from the lion and the bear. He ended with God delivering him from Goliath. And, and he won the victory. We've got to start with how Jesus defeated the devil on the cross. And then we end with Jesus defeated the devil on the cross. And we walk in the victory of Jesus Christ. Now, I've been teaching all week, part one last week, part two this week, on what do you live by? Well, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And then you go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Second, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Yeah. Here it is, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by Jesus. See, if, if, if the scriptures teach us to follow his example, don't you think Jesus going to have to show us how? Now, and I've taught this before, but the Lord's leading me to teach it again. That when you live by Jesus, you are really living by Hearing him say something, believing and speaking what he say, and do what Jesus tell you to do. Uh, Jesus told the disciples in Luke chapter 8, verse 22, he said, let us go over to the other side. And so as they were going, Jesus went down, took him a nap. And a great storm rose. Um, and Jesus uh, told his disciples he said where is your faith after he rebuked it where is your faith and so Jesus want to ask you every day in every test and in every trial where is your faith. Every time you're struggling, every time you're going through any kind of testing trial, he wants to ask you this question. Where is my integrity? Where is my veracity? Where is my uh, 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 truth telling, uh, truth, habitual truth teller? Where is your confidence? In what I said. He want to ask you that. Every day in your life. Where's your integrity. In what he said. That's your faith. 
is what Jesus said. If you don't hear Jesus say something, you're not going to have faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the words that come from Jesus' lips, the Messiah. And so we have to understand that the disciples should have told the story. Jesus said, come. Jesus said, we going to the other side. That's all Peter had to tell that wind. Well, Jesus said for me to come. Now you stop it. And the wind would have stopped for him because he would have heard what Jesus said. <laughs> and if they'd have told that storm, Jesus said, we going to the other side. Now you stop it, storm. The, G the storm would have heard Jesus. The words that came from Jesus' lips from God and the creator, it would have obeyed him. And so we, we, we've got to see when the scriptures teach us in, in Romans 1.17, we live by faith. We really live it by hearing Jesus, believing and speaking, and doing what Jesus tells us to do. I'm telling you, your life is going to be fine. Your, a lot of times when the Lord ain't spoke to me, I seek him. I just kick back and relax, man. I, I don't see me trying to work nothing out. I, see, I know I ain't going to produce God that way. So it don't sense in me fretting or have any anxiety about anything. What, what for? I can't fix it. I might want well to keep back and enjoy his peace and joy. See? And people just get real fearful. Now, Jesus said this. Uh, in um, John 16, 33, Jesus brought this out and let me turn there these things have I spoken unto you that in me you'll have peace in the world Jesus said you're going to have tribulations now listen to what Jesus said but be of good cheer do what be of good cheer I'm going to come to work I'm going to come to work be of good cheer I won't come to work. Be of good cheer. And I, I just believe, and I'm going to pray for you all today too. Believe God for your healing. Believe God for deliverance from addictions, habits. And believe God to come through for you financially. Um, Jesus taught us how to handle every circumstance and situation. And that don't mean you always know what to do, uh, but you know how to prepare yourself to get ready for what to do. And th this, is, this is a teaching that needs to be taught all over the world. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you'll have peace. Jesus said, where, where are you going to have peace? In Jesus. She said in me, that me is what he say and what he do. You're going to have peace. And if you don't hear something Jesus say and do, you, you're not even in Jesus to have peace. She said in me, you'll have peace. Now listen carefully to this. In the world, you're going to have some troubles, some tests and trials, frustrations, distresses. I'm trying, I done had some this year. But I didn't stay here. Now this is a teaching that Jesus Christ want every believer in the world to hear. Jesus said, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. That's good. You don't understand. They finna put us out of our house. We finna lose our home. Be of good cheer. He really didn't, you know, people get divorced. And, uh, we're not taught how to love like Jesus. You know, you don't get no divorce in Jesus' love. Because it never fails. And uh, the Lord, you know, uh, you know, man going to kill you. Uh, you know.
know, just going out and living any kind of way. And you have to listen to the Lord, but if you would do what Jesus say, he could teach you how to walk in love, how to trust him, how to take authority over the devil. And Jesus taught all Christians when they go through tests and trials. And sometimes people get, get bring, bring, bring that, that trouble, man, and, 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 and it, done, it got so big that sometimes people are not even in a position to receive what Jesus said. But Jesus said, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. He said, be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. Now, listen to this. I just love this. 16, Amplified. I've told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. Be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. Now, listen to what that means. I've deprived it of power to harm you and conquered it for you. Saints, everything we face has really been conquered. Fears, toxins, <laughs> don't eat this. And, well, if God created, I can eat it in moderation. And, and if I pray over it and, and eat it with thanksgiving, ask God to bless it. He really can't do it. I, you really, a lot of this stuff, a lot of these nutritions teach here in America, they can't go to Africa and teach that mess. And um, they can't do it. They, they can only teach that stuff over here in America. So you have to teach the word in Africa. And then you really ought to teach it over here. The Bible said nothing is to be refused that God created if you receive it with thanksgiving. Nothing he created. To be refused. Nothing. And uh, you know, people uh, don't don't agree with Jesus on that. But Jesus said, nothing you eat will defile you. It's what come out of the mouth that defiles you, not what go in. And Jesus said that out of his own mouth. And I, I believe when men get a hold of stuff and tater chips and and Coke Colas and drinks and you know that that stuff ain't good. But it ain't, it, you can eat a, a drink that every now and then. But you shouldn't live on that stuff. Y'all live on something God created. Amen. <laughs> Jesus want us in every test and trial, every trouble, to be of good cheer that He's done something about it. He's greater. He wants you to be a good cheer all day long, son. That he has overcome what you're facing. Let, let, let me show you this a little bit better. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, here the apostle Paul in verse 8 prayed when Satan was buffing his flesh, not God. And it was some kind of sickness. And this thing, he besought the Lord three times that it might depart from him. And the Lord said to Paul, this, listen to this, see, what, what's, what's going to come? Faith. What is faith? Jesus. How does faith work? You got to hear what Jesus said. So Jesus said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Listen, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Not, not to put up with it, but that Jesus conquered this on the cross. And, and, then, and then he said, most glad of that, for will I glory in my infirmness. God want his children to be of good cheer that Jesus has done something about what's wrong, that through Jesus we can overcome. I don't care what it is. And Jesus said to Paul, my strength is made perfect when you and I can't do nothing about it. Now, this, and this is what people miss. It's pride. And they really try to use their strength and their ability to, 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 to look like something, 
to make them not wrong, to make them, you know, feel like, you know, but, but really, saints, let me tell you, one of the greatest loves beside Jesus took your sins away. One of the greatest loves you will ever have from the Lord is when he corrects you. That is one of the greatest loves. I adore the Lord for correcting me, instructing me, rebuke. I mean, I'm so thankful that he did not let me walk in what wasn't going to produce him. I'm so thankful that Jesus has corrected me my whole Christian walk. And he doesn't it very seldom now. Because he's taught me what to walk in. And I am so thankful that you, you won't get a greater love if a parent won't correct their child, they don't love them. If they let their child walk in ways that's gonna destroy their lives one day, they don't, you don't love your child. Who the Lord loves, he chastens. You got, you're going to have to quit seeing when you get corrected because you're feeling all these emotions <laughs> that it's there to hurt you. It's not. It's there to love you. And, and Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I glory. Jesus is correcting him here. He's loving him. And he said, I'm going to glory in my infirmities and weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon Jesus cannot rest on us if we don't acknowledge we can't and he can. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity. Do you take pleasure? What do you live by? Do you really take pleasure in your weaknesses? Do you have a pleasure? When you can't do it, but you trust Jesus can. In reproaches, necessities, persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. When you're weak and you acknowledge your inability to live what Jesus said, and you have to trust him to live it, now you are strong. And so right in the midst of what we can't do, the Lord wants us to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Amen. Now, let me get ready to wrap this up because I want to pray with you all. And listen carefully at this. I'm going to close in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Oh, this is Holy Ghost. You better call somebody and tell them, listen at this part. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Everybody in the world need to hear this. Now, I'm going to read it in, 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 in uh, uh, the King James 16 to 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Give thanks. I can't thank the Lord when you just got, they just got through dogging me. Yes, you can. You thank him because he is able to do something about it. He's great. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let me, let me, let me go there. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Here we go. Be happy in your faith. <laughs> what, what? Be happy. In the Jesus that's living in you and rejoice and be glad hearted continually, always. Be unceasing in prayer. Pray uh, uh, perseveringly. Just don't give up on praying. Thank God in everything. No matter what the circumstance may be, be thankful and give thanks for this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus. Do you do that every day? What do you live by? Do every time something go wrong, you start thanking God? See, Christians need to be taught to live this kind of life. I like the message Bible. Oh, this is, oh, this is so good. Be cheerful no matter what. 
pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you to belong to Christ Jesus to live. Huh? Be happy all the time. I live this every day. I say thank you. I'm not thanking God if somebody got cancer. I'm thanking him that Jesus has provided healing and deliverance for that cancer. Saints, if we would learn this, our lives will never be the same. If you learn to be a good cheer, John 16, 33, that Jesus has overcome the world, overcome every test and trial we face, and you learn to be thankful and be happy in your faith. And no matter what the circumstance is, thank God for it. You say, thanks, God, our car broke down. Thank God, thank God your car broke down. Because he has a way to get it fixed. Well, Pastor Scares, we, we don't know what we're to do. Thank God, thank God you don't know what to do. Now go ask him for wisdom. Because he knows what to do. Amen. Pastor Scares, we just having trouble with our children. Thank God, thank God you're having trouble with them. Because God is the only one who knows what to do in that situation. And when you thank him, when you be of good cheer, and you thank him, this is faith in Jesus, and it activates him to get involved in your situation. If you whine it, he don't get involved. If you just crying and whine it, he's not going to get involved. If you thank him for it, knowing he's bigger, knowing that Jesus is greater who lives in you, hallelujah, praise God, and God will get involved. When you be a good cheer, Jesus will get involved. When you're happy in your faith, Jesus is always going to connect to people who are happy in their faith, their trust and reliance in how great he is. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you today. Many of y'all out there listening, watching the broadcast, you're troubled. Many of you maybe go to church, maybe you've been water baptized. You know, I tell me and I go into prisons and I tell me and you know, a lot of y'all trying to live on my daddy, preacher, my granddaddy, preacher. So, so what What that got to do with how you live every day? Well, I got baptized when I was little. Well, you've been, you ain't been living right. So you need to make Jesus your Lord and master. So I want you to pray this with me and just mean it. That's the only way to work if you're sincere in praying to say, Father God, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Son of God. I believe in my heart when Jesus died on the cross, he took my sins away. Say this, and rose from the dead on the third day. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me and change me and give me eternal life. I repent of my sin, the sin of unbelief. Now I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Say, I believe my sins have been washed all away. And now I'm walking that I'm right with God. Say it out loud. I'm right with God. You didn't earn this. This is a gift. Now it's time to hear Jesus, believe and speak, and start living and doing what he tells you to do. He gives you the power. When you hear him and believe and speak and go do it, you are living in his strength and not yours. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> now I want to pray for you that are sick and bound and hurting. Every bit of that pain is getting ready to leave. Every bit of it. Father, by the authority of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed in your bodies. I curse every sickness and every disease. I curse those spirits of infirmities, and I command them to loose your bodies in Jesus' name. I command that headache to stop. I command that tumor to die. I command that blood, hot blood level to be whole and I command your body to function normal in Jesus name 
And Lord Jesus, I give you all the praise and honor and goes you, Lord, do the healing, not me. And I thank you in advance. I pray for those that are addicted, those that are bound. I command those chains to be broke off of their minds. Satan, you loose them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray you'll put them in a good church. You'll put them with a true pastor. Those who have a heart after you and those, Father, who will teach them the truth about Jesus Christ and good Christians who will embrace them and help them grow up in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, I want to invite y'all to church this Sunday to Jesus at church in Watertown. And, and, and you say, where is that at? Listen, call the number 615-237-9802. And we'll give you direction. You, you, you can use your phone, GPSs. You can go on our web, robertscapeministry.org, and get directions. We, we stream our services live, but I want you to come. I want you to sit in these services and watch what God do to you. And in your life, you'll be taught truth and you'll be loved. Those two, I guarantee. I'm not going to teach you what you want to hear. I'm going to teach you what Jesus taught, what Jesus said, and what Jesus did. And, and, and it'll change your life. So you come today. I know a church that's alive is worth the drive. Amen. Also, I want to make available this uh, six CD series uh and, and listen, saints, what do you live by? And it's a part it's a part one, part two. But for $40, I got a special this week. And I'll give you a copy of my book, The Gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. If you order these today for a love gift of $40 or more, I'll, I'll pay the post and have to send these to you. So make your checks and money orders to Jesus. It's the Answer Ministry, Post Office Box 292112, Nashville, Tennessee. 37229. And you can go on our webpage, robertscaleministry.org, and order these, robertscaleministry.org, and then we'll, 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 you can use your credit card. Amen. And don't forget, we do our services live. We stream it live. So you can go to our webpage, Robertscale Ministries. You can go archive and listen to our messages, and they'll bless your life. Well, my time is up today. Thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for helping me to get the gospel out. Thanks. Listen, the Lord told me to come on TV, and it's up to God to speak to his people, and I know God is speaking, and I trust that you'll obey him. Well, my prayer for you today is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus and some ministers, I'm Pastor Robert Stills. Remember now, as Christ died and loved you on that cross while you was a sinner, Go live his love toward everybody. Have a blessed weekend, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. We love you. Stay faithful to his love. Bye-bye.